I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. And today, our Way to a Wonderful Life message is titled, Accept Nothing Mentally That Does Not Fill Your Soul With Joy. Accept Nothing Mentally That Does Not Fill Your Soul With Joy. Now, this title is for this message was a quote gifted to us by the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. So let's hear that again. Accept nothing mentally that does not fill your soul with joy. In other words, don't accept anything about yourself that does not make you feel a sense of joy. Now, the law of life is always working automatically, whether we are consciously aware of it or not. This principle, like other universal principles, for example, the law of gravity, is no respecter of persons, and it's changeless. No matter who we are, rich or poor, male or female, white, black, brown or mixed, tall, short, fat, thin, good, bad or indifferent, believer or atheist, these principles work perfectly and precisely all the time for everybody. <clears throat> Just like the law of gravity. Now, the principle is, as you sow, so shall you reap. As you sow, so shall you reap. Now, this principle is also known as the law of cause and effect. In other words, the words and thoughts that we sow into the fertile soil of our mind returns to us in a myriad of forms creating the experiences that fill our life. It does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that that which gets our attention is the thing that is going to manifest in our life. Now, how it manifests is determined by our thoughts, our words, and our beliefs about it. If we choose to realize success in our business or work, yet our mind is consumed with the ideas of competition, beliefs about business failure, and thoughts of doubt and fear that we will fail, we will demonstrate these ideas, beliefs and thoughts, rather than success. It is automatic. Nobody else does it to us, not the economy or our competitors, we do. This principle will work exactly in the same manner for a relationship, for financial prosperity, for family harmony, for career growth, greater health, whatever. It is its nature to do so, and like the law of gravity, as I said before, it is changeless and automatic. And we can go back to the book of Job and the Holy Scriptures, and we can read, That which I have greatly feared has come upon me. So we know that fear is something that we do in our mind. It's a mental, it's a mental action of mind that holds the thought of fear. And Job confessed that what he had greatly feared had come upon him. In other words, he had done it to himself. Now, <clears throat> at one time I was visited by a man who has offered several books that are at first glance academic but intriguing. More importantly, he invented a product that created excitement in the investor community. During the past couple of years, he received $6 million from investors who had confidence and faith in his product. During these two years, he drove a magnificent car, bought suits from some of the finest stores in Beverly Hills, and maintained a professional office in one of the most prestigious business district streets in Los Angeles County. When he arrived in my office, he was down to $63 and borrowed money. His rent was past due. His office had been closed and his telephones disconnected. He did not come to me because of his religious or spiritual beliefs. He really had none. He came to me because he believes in the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect or as it is praised in the scriptures, the law of sowing and reaping. Now, all the sowing and reaping that we do is in our own mind. It doesn't matter what somebody else thinks of us, ever. It is always what we think of ourselves. It never matters what happens in the world around us. All that happens is in the world, in the, inside our own mental thinking, our own thoughts, our own ideas about ourselves and our place in the universe and what we're doing. But the Master Man Jesus said, <clears throat> excuse me, the kingdom of heaven is within you. 
And it could just as easily have said, the kingdom of hell is within you, because both would be true. Both would be true. So the law of cause and effect, or as it is phrased in the scriptures, the law of sowing and reaping, it manifests based on cause and cause alone, that there is a greater cause than man. There is a greater cause than man's beliefs, thoughts, and ideas. There is first cause, and many of us forget this when we are in the thick of things. First cause is God, the thing itself, absolute principle. First cause is God, the thing itself, absolute principle. In other words, it reigns supreme throughout the universe. It's everywhere present, just like the law of gravity, just like the law of gravity. Present but unseen, but absolutely powerful, even more powerful than gravity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I'm an absolute believer in not ignoring the facts in any situation, condition, or circumstance. In this teaching, we don't deny the facts, but we aren't afraid of them either. We know we have to move from something to somewhere, so we must know from where we are moving. The facts reveal the consciousness that is manifesting the condition, circumstance, or situation. The truth reveals the power of God in man that is greater than the facts. Whatever is being held in consciousness must be cast out to make way for that which will create a more favorable effect or a more wonderful experience. In the Bible, this is referred to as casting out demons. The demons, casting out demons. The demons are the false beliefs, the false thoughts, and the false ideas that are attached to the consciousness and manifesting as a disagreeable experience. This turning or casting out automatically begins to affect the consciousness that is open to change, receptive to good, and is ready to let go of the negative. The person who came to visit me, this man, was in a state of readiness for healing. So what we are seeking in consciousness is seeking us, and it will find us. Six million dollars, the best of suits, no matter where we are, no matter what we are doing, what I am seeking, accepting in my mind, is ever seeking to express itself for me automatically. So we must know that that which I am seeking is seeking me. And there absolutely is nothing, nothing in this world that can prevent this from happening as long as we allow ourselves to let it in. But we have to let it in. That's the thing. We have to let it in. Now, prior to studying metaphysics, I had never thought much about mind. Although I had discovered that spirit is the life within all things from the teachings of the great mystics, being someone who wants proof of the truth, it didn't take too much research and observation to realize the truth that there is a spirit within all living things. Life itself gives us evidence of this as we tune out perceptions based on knowledge alone. So when we think of the spirit of the thing, we realize that each individual life expression is a unique character and personality, and this is the same truth for plants and animals as well. This truth gives new meaning to the words in the book of Isaiah. Besides him, besides the spirit, there is none other, there is no thing. So we know that life is, and we are. So we now, so we know that spirit is life, in infinitely individualized expressions, infinitely individualized expressions. Yet, though we may know that spirit is life, not only life but our own individual life, we must eliminate within our mind all the negative stuff that we believe about life. We must eliminate it. That which I am seeking is seeking me. That which I have greatly feared has come upon me. Remember those words of Joe. If we start putting things in our mind about what we love about life, what we love about who we are and what we're doing and where we're going in life, I think we can say that which I have greatly loved, that which I have greatly held in my mind is wonderful. 
becoming a fun myth. If we can discipline our thoughts to create either heaven or hell in our experience, we have the free will to do it. No one can think for us, and therefore no one can take our dominion and authority over our life from us. Our free will, unless we consent to it, our thoughts, like our fingerprints, are unique, and this is in an indisputable truth. And no two people have the same fingerprints. It is only in our human thinking that we allow ourselves to believe that anyone or anything can have power over us, the power over our thoughts, the power over our beliefs, the power over our ideas about ourselves. We must know that all these things are God-ordained, God-sustained, and God-maintained, and this power is God within us. Or as, once again, as the Mastermind Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven within us. The kingdom of heaven within us. Heaven mean, meaning that nothing is blocking our free will from having and doing and being and realizing that which we choose to experience in life. Sadly enough, mankind has created many inventions that deny this authority and dominion. We incessantly look out at the world with thoughts of big and small, greater and lesser, and this builds within us the creation of comparison. Someone once said that we live in a world of comparisons, and objectively this is correct, but spiritually it is a disaster. Comparisons lead to all manner of discord in our lives. It leads to resentment to jealousy, to inferiority, superiority, and so forth, and also a false look, a, fa a false outlook on life. The spiritual truth is that there is no big or small, there only is, is. When we compare, we lose sight of our spiritual identity and the understanding that we are in our right and perfect place at all times. When we lose sight of this truth, then we begin in our mind to separate ourselves from God, to separate ourselves from the principle, and this creates a lack of trust in the unconditional love that the universe offers each and every one of us. Think about those words again from Dr. the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. Accept nothing mentally that does not fill your soul with joy. Do comparisons fill our soul with joy? No. We say, oh, yes, because I can compare my life to other people around me, and my life is so much better. But that's an attitude of superiority. Every, every person's life is perfect. Everybody is in their perfect and right place based on consciousness. Based on consciousness. When we lose sight of the truth, and we begin in our mind to separate ourselves, from our divine inherent free will because we've had the free will to think we've had the free will to hold ideas we've had the free will to choose what things we believe is true and what things we believe are false and we believe that a homeless man and a man living in a 30 room mansion in Beverly Hills are both in their right and perfect place and are both receiving the unconditional love and protection from God in the infinite spirit. Objectively, this is difficult to understand, and for some people, it's impossible. Spiritually, it is quite simple. Both are receiving precisely, perfectly, that which they are willing to accept in consciousness. God has no favor. So we don't need to examine any other externals to figure this out. It is an inside job so what each are receiving is precisely to the point of perfection that which they are accepting for themselves. So why is there such a disparity in their level of acceptance? <clears throat> well, one of the reasons, most probably, is the level of their awareness and attention on comparison. Since we live in a universe with infinite abundance of every good thing, when we compare, we will always find that we have less. 
even the man in the 30-room mansion will find someone with a 60-room mansion to make his home look small. The mind that accepts more and more of the good available in the universe does not stop and compare, but keeps its attention on the beauty, the joy, and the happiness of expressing life in a greater and greater way. The universe is always growing and expanding, never stopping to compare, and if we are to align ourselves with the growth and expansion of the universe, we must not stop and compare either. In order to expand and grow both spiritually and in love and peace and joy and happiness and harmony on the objective side of life, we must continually keep our mind on more and more good, knowing always that there is nothing to block us from accepting more and that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. What does that mean? <clears throat> Jesus said the Father is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the reason he called them Father and calls them Him is because it's a powerful force, and the powerful force was associated with the masculine gender in those days in that era. So when we stop and compare, our mind is not on the good, it's not on the kingdom of heaven within us, but on comparison, on a belief that perhaps there is something that we are not receiving or that we are receiving more than others, and once again, we are caught up in the tricks of the ego mind that creates superiority. Inferiority and superiority come from a belief in big and small, greater and lesser, and both attitudes held steadily in mind will create chaos in our lives at some point. Now, there are two statements in Scripture that will keep us focused on the wonderful life that we will take the time to remember them and affirm them as the truth in our lives. The first is a statement of unconditional love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's a powerful statement. That's from the book of Jeremiah. I have loved you with an everlasting love. There's no conditions to God's love. Remember, God judges us from the heart. God doesn't judge from the way the world judges. And God has given us free will. Free will. If our life is a mess, it was our free will that caused the mess. If our life is steadily, increasingly good, then it's our state of mind, our attitude, our elevated ideas about ourselves just making it good. So the second statement will keep us reminded of the first, Thou will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Remember, God and good are synonymous. In other words, God loves us unconditionally. We must not deny this love by allowing our mind to believe in the tricks of comparison. And whatever good we want to see more of in our experience, we must seek it first in our very own consciousness, in our awareness of the givingness of God, and the givingness of the infinite spirit, power, and intelligence that is God, so what we take possession of in consciousness is ours. The world cannot give it, and the world cannot take it away. What God is going to do for us, we all know this, God must do through us. There is no other way. There absolutely is no other way. God must do it through us. Otherwise, we become puppets. Puppets. You know, who you think you are is also intimately connected with how you see yourself treated by others. Many people complain that others do not treat them well enough. I don't get any respect. I don't get any attention. I don't get any recognition, I don't get any acknowledgement, or they say, I've been taken for granted. Sounds like, sounds like children, huh? Toddler, or politicians, <laughs> speaking. I don't get any respect, I don't get any attention. When people are kind, sometimes people suspect their motives. 
Oh, they think others want to manipulate me. They want to take advantage of me. Nobody loves me. All this stuff in our mind is poison. Poison to the mind, poison to the body. So when they think this way, they're saying, in effect, I am a needy little me whose needs are not being met, and this basic misperception of who they are creates dysfunction in all areas of their lives. They believe they have nothing to give and that the world or other people are withholding from them what they need. Their entire reality is based on a false sense of who they are. It sabotages oppor opportunities. It mars all their relationships. Brings on thoughts of lack for money, for health, for all manner of things. The fact is, whatever we think the world is withholding from us, we are withholding from the world. We are withholding it because deep down we think we are small and that we have nothing to give. We gotta, we gotta stop all that. We gotta stop all that. The way to a wonderful life is an inside job. The way to a wonderful life is an inside job. We must know that. That way is within each and every one of us. But we must learn to harmonize ourselves with the universe. Harmonize, uh, harmonize ourselves with the givingness of God. Harmonize ourselves with all the wonderful things that God has created for us to enjoy. Think about, think about all the wonderful things that you've come across in your life. Think about this. Think about these words. This is from the great American mystic Ernest Holmes from his book, The Thing Called You. This book was gifted to me by Dr. Robbie Smith, who was Dr. O.C. Smith's wife, his widow. And I will treasure this book for the rest of my days on this planet. <clears throat> Dr. Holmes wrote, These are words for us to choose to carry in our consciousness as the truth for us. So he writes, Today I recognize the abundance of life. I animate everything in my experience with this idea. I remember only the good. I accept only the good. I expect only the good. This is all I shall experience. I give thanks that this good is flowing in ever-increasing volume. I say to my mind, there is good enough to go around. I do not withhold that good from myself or from others but proclaim that spiritual abundance, spiritual substance, is forever flowing to each and to all as daily supply, as daily supply. And if we become accustomed to this thought, everything, everything starts working better in our lives. We must learn to become consciously aware of the presence of God, the presence of good. Remember, God and good is synonymous. God and good is synonymous. So think of the presence. Think of gravity. Think of how powerful a pull gravity has on us. And start thinking about how we can allow ourselves in mind to allow the infinite spirit, the spirit that is the presence that's with us, around us, at all times to manifest itself through us, as us, and for us. Realize that your good is at hand. Just like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand, not low here, not low there. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the kingdom of God is within you. So start thinking that all your good is inside, waiting to be released into your world of experience.
think about that faith the size of a mustard seed. And remember, in the time of the Holy Scriptures, the mustard seed was considered the smallest seed on the planet. Although that wasn't true, it was still an extremely small seed. But if you have the faith the size of the mustard seed, the mastermind Jesus tells us, you can move a mountain, that mountain into the sea. That's what he told them. You can move that mountain into the sea. Now, did he tell, did he want people to move mountains into the sea? Of course not. But he wanted them to understand that the things that were pressing on their mind, the things that were pressing in their experience that required their action, that required intelligence and power and spirit and whatever else necessary for them to realize the wonderful life, through faith they could accomplish it. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, not seen. We have faith in gravity. If we could put that same faith in gravity, that level of faith that we have in gravity, and raise the level of faith in ourselves to that same level that we have that faith in gravity that's always working for us, always available to us, always present. If we could say, I and God are one, that I am part of God because I am part of life and God is life, and so I must have faith in myself to accomplish those things that come to me to accomplish, and those things that come to me to accomplish are the good desires of my heart. So whatever good we want to see more of in our experiences, we must seek it first in our very own consciousness, in our awareness, in our awareness that no one gives to us but ourselves. And when we take possession of these things in consciousness, they shall be ours. And let's remember these words all week from the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. Accept nothing mentally that does not fill your soul with joy. Accept nothing mentally that does not fill your soul with joy. So once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been my great pleasure to have you. And I hope you join me once again for The Way to a Wonderful Life, broadcast every Saturday evening, 5 o'clock Pacific Time. 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on WIMB World.